Baby, donde tú quieras, yo paso a buscarte. Tú espérame afuera, pa' si no llamarte. No traigas paraguas como quiera, va a mojarte. La Welcome back to Max Reaction. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing good. We are. Anyway, we're going to react to some subscri subscriber requested series. This is Journey to the West Part 1. And uh, this is Legend Summarized, the Monkey King from Overly Sarcastic Productions. They are absolutely amazing. If you want to learn about history, if you want to learn about mythology, definitely go subscribe to their channel. They are awesome. Two thumbs up. Actually, four thumbs up. Um, they say this is a great series, and I love learning. Knowledge is power, even if you're learning about history. So we're going, to, especially when you, especially when you learn about history, because you can learn so much from past history, because history tends to repeat itself in certain ways. So let's go ahead and check this out. Let's react to it. I don't know too much about it, so I'm gonna learn a lot. So we're gonna react to it. We'll talk about it afterwards. Just make sure you comment down below. Keep that comment section alive. Let's react. After this advertisement. Had a coach in high school. Really helped me up my game. The Journey to the West is one of China's four great classical novels. It's China a novel. For enlightenment, and it's approximately 2,000 pages long. As such, it's not I need a to read text it. I could easily summarize in a single video of rational length. Anyway, The Journey yeah, to the West crazy is long. with symbolism, dense literary context, and some majorly influential characters. And it's widely agreed upon one of the characters. these characters is Sun Wukong, the mischievous monkey king. Sun Wukong's most famous mark on the modern world Sun is probably Wukong. the Dragon Ball Son Goku, a character specifically designed to emulate the abilities of the impulsive goofiness of the original monkey king. Love Goku. Wukong's influence is far from being restricted to anime. Stories based on the character's exploits have appeared in almost every form of media, which is why it might come as a surprise to learn that he isn't the main character in the journey to the Really? Life. That honor belongs to the monk, Xuanzang, a character so Xuanzang? Thought that we don't even know he exists for the first seven chapters. Dang. Which instead devoted exclusively to the life of Sun Wukong and how he made it his mission to single-handedly piss off every deity in all three of Chinese oh. religions. Now, is that a I good idea? I don't think so. My source material. So in keeping with the structure of the text, this first video will be covering the history of Sun Wukong and then in later videos we'll see about actually getting to the rest of the not in considerable length of this text. So our story begins on Flower Fruit Mountain, an island paradise full of dragons, magic birds, immortal peaches, Fun and place. one really big rock. Allow me to direct your attention to this rock, as it is big magical rock. magic trick. ta -da! The rock wow. splits in half, revealing another rock. But Woo! this rock is special. It's actually a rock egg, no, not that one, and it appears to have invented magic. the magic prowess of its daddy rock, as it scarcely existed for more than a minute before it abruptly transforms into a stone monkey. Now, this monkey may have spontaneously <laughs> generated barely three seconds prior, but he already knows his manners, so he bows to the four cardinal directions, and in the process, Inadvertently activates his laser eyes. He has laser eyes. Disturbance when they shoot all the way into the palace of the Jade Emperor. The oh, that's not good. Himself. So the stone <laughs> monkey hangs out with a friendly population of not stone monkeys who one day decide to follow their favorite river up to its source. Whereupon they find that it comes, unsurprisingly, from a big fancy waterfall. So all the monkeys are like, "Oh man! If only one of us were impulsive enough to jump into the waterfall and see what happens, we'd uh, be the monkey king." And the stone monkey did somebody say impulsive and dives in. So <laughs> on the other side of the waterfall, he finds a gorgeous cavern decked out. It was worth it. An enormous stone man engine, fully furnished with all the necessities of life. The monkeys are understandably impressed, and they all pile in to live in this newly discovered cavernous paradise. And for his achievement, the sun monkey is now officially crowned the Monkey King. Yeah! The of Flower Fruit Mountain live in peace and security for several hundred years, but one day, Monkey King has an existential crisis, pulls Gilgamesh, and goes on a quest for immortality. Nine years and two continents later, the monkey finds an immortal Taoist sage, who lives on top of the mountain of heart and mind in the cave of the slanting moon and three stars. Man, these names are a mouthful. So the immortal sage Subodi takes on the Monkey King as one of his disciples, and he gives him a new name, derived from a large number of increasingly complex character traits, and long story short, his name is now Sun Wukong. So after a Sun Wukong, I love the name. Shibodi finally teaches Sun Wukong a way to become immortal, which Wukong starts practicing. How do you gotta do it? Go by, and Sun Wukong is feeling pretty good about life. He's practicing the Tao, he's functionally immortal, and life is good. But Shibodi warns him he's not out of the woods yet. Turns out the court of heaven doesn't actually approve of this method of immortality. Oh crap! They will send down three calamities in an effort to kill him, one every five hundred years. That's First, not they'll good. strike him with lightning. Then later, if that didn't work, they'll set him on fire. And finally, if neither of those do the trick, they'll straight up disintegrate. Him. This understanding. Shouldn't the god know how to kill him? Why does there gotta be three tries? Shouldn't it only take one try? And you know, if he doesn't approve of the, the immortality, then you think he would know how to kill him, right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 
Candidly, Wig's ax on Wukong, but Subodi offers to teach him the art of the earthly multitude, which will let him transform into 72 different things. With this, the three calamities will be shape shifting into things. Wukong how to slide, just because. But unsurprisingly, giving awesome cosmic powers to a suicidally impulsive magical monkey leads to some wacky hijinks. And Master Subodi <laughs> has to kick him out so he won't accidentally reveal his secret teachings. Uh -oh. So Sun Wukong, now That's not cool. Is older and hypothetically wiser, at last returns to the water curtain cave on Flower Fruit Mountain, and he returns just in time since the monkey population has been being harassed by a monster known uh -oh. only as the monstrous king of havoc, who's been intermittently Ooh. stopping by and kidnapping them to use as servants. So Wukong goes and the monster to a duel, <laughs> proceeds to absolutely kick his ass with his newfound Taoist superpowers, and then he rescues the captive monkeys and flies them all back home. So what a legend. Flower Fruit Mountain, but Wukong decides that his monkey kingdom should probably have a monkey army, so stuff like the kidnapping thing doesn't happen. There you go. And on that note, Wukong also takes a trip down to the Dragon Palace in the Eastern Ocean to see if the Dragon King has a weapon befitting his strength that he could borrow. Long story short, borrow. after dismissing every superpowered weapon the Dragon King offers him, Wukong ends up taking an obscenely heavy magic size-changing iron pillar out of the palace treasury and using it as a staff. Did so he Wukong steal it? With his new weapon and asks the Dragon King for some fancy new The Dragon King is so terrified of this super powerful monkey that he gathers all of his He's dragon terrified? Whoa. a fancy outfit for Wukong just to get him out of their house. When he returns to Flower Fruit Mountain to show his He's getting the aim he strength. He's so hyped up that he briefly turns into a huge demonic caricature of himself, which terrifies the local demon population so much that demon kings show up at his front door to form an alliance with him. So life is going He's so well, powerful, dude. Until one day, while taking a nap, he's abruptly kidnapped by two emissaries of Yama, the king I of thought. Yama, and carry him off to the underworld. Wukong is understandably pissed, seeing as this is technically death and violates the whole immortality deal, and he right. starts fashioning his way into the Palace of Darkness to lodge a complaint with the Ten Kings. So fashion his way. Like, Ooh, there must have been some kind of mistake. I mean, there must be a bunch of dudes named Sung Wukong, right? And Wukong or is just like, one? Right. Show me where that's written down. So they sort through all the ledgers of the dead until they find the one about him, and he scribbles out his name, along with the names of as many monkeys as he can find, thus freeing <laughs> the jurisdiction of the underworld gods. Satisfied, How many? Wukong fashions his way back out of the underworld, then wakes up and tells all the monkeys the good news. But all is not well in the kingdom of heaven, as the Jade Emperor finds himself inundated with complaints about this monkey king who keeps causing trouble. So at first the Jade Emperor is he really causing the trouble? The shenanigans, but the spirit of Venus suggests instead that they offer the monkey king a position in the bureaucracy of heaven, whereupon they'd be able to better control his actions and easily discipline him if need be. The Jade Emperor gives a thumbs up and they send down the gold star they caused him trouble. Wu Kong, who eagerly accepts. So the gold star takes him up to heaven and takes him to meet the Jade Emperor, who appoints him the position of Pima Wen, which makes him the head of the Imperial Stables. So Wukong thinks that's pretty sweet, and he's fairly chill with the whole situation, until he thinks to ask what exactly his rank is, whereupon he is informed that Pima Wen is actually the lowest possible position oh. in the entire bureaucracy. Oh no. Wukong, being a bit of a diva at this point, is understandably pissed, and once yeah. he bashes his way out of heaven and returns to Flower Fruit Mountain to Silk. So Wukong decides to make himself feel better by calling himself the Great Sage equal to heaven, and meanwhile, Whoa. the Emperor learns of his temper tantrum and sends down several celestial soldiers to capture him. The first among these is the Mighty Spirit God, who challenges Wukong to a duel. Wukong's like, dude, just tell your boss I want a better title. And the Mighty Spirit God is like, why don't you tell him yourself? In hell! And gets oh. destroyed for his troubles. So then Prince Nana confronts Wukong, who's like, what are you, Ooh. 12? Look, kid, just tell this your boss I want to be called Great Sage equal to heaven, alright? And Nana's like, I'll show you who's 12! And transforms into a big scary monster with a butt ton of weapons. Wukong is, of course, unimpressed, and matches the transformation with one of his own. They fight for a while until Wukong gets the drop on Nana with a duplicate and smacks him with a stick thing. Yeah. That's how the Jade Emperor would happen, and the Emperor is all like, How dare you resist the rest? No! Star of Venus, apparently the only voice of reason in the entire heavenly bureaucracy, no. suggests that rather than risk their entire army on one super powerful right. monkey, they just give Wukong what he wants, an empty title. So they do, and a department is set up in heaven for him to lounge around in and not cause trouble. Wukong is completely down for spending his days languishing in heaven, being waited on hand and foot by Why not? determined not to give him a reason to go on a rampage. But one of the resident Taoist immortals suggests that Wukong might end up getting bored, which carries uh -oh. with the terrifying possibility of the great son Wukong rampaging through heaven looking for entertainment. Why are they so, so scared of him? a relatively harmless but time-consuming duty to Wukong, tending the Garden of Peaches of Immortality. Wukong's super down for that, but quickly finds that having to maintain a garden full of delicious immortality-granting peaches without eating any of them is impossible for oh, his more impulsive brain to right? So, if you've been taking notes, this means he's now double immortal. But this comes back to bite him on the butt when the time comes for the Queen Mother of Heaven to hold her annual peach festival, and her seven color-coded immortal maidens enter the grove. Well, they're all gone. Notably lacking in peaches. Oh. So they inadvertently wake Wukong up, who decides that he wants to go to the festival too. So Wukong paralyzes the maidens, impersonates a local immortal who was invited, then scoots on into the banquet hall. He's so kind of turning bad. It's why you weren't invited in the first place. Right. So when he arrives, he's immediately distracted by the smell of wine and proceeds to make off with the entire supply of heavenly booze. Oh, that's not good. Immortal. So Wukong, now triply immortal and thoroughly drunk, inadvertently stumbles into Lao Tzu's little slice of heaven while searching for a place to sleep it off. And if you want to know who this Lao Tzu person is, I'm working on it, goddammit. Ninjas, oh god. So drunk Wukong <laughs> stumbles into Lao Tzu's palace to say hello, but he can't find the sage anywhere. But he does find Lao Tzu's alchemical lab, in which he finds several gourds full of pills of immortality. Oh, so crap. He guesses as to what Wukong does next. Drink some? <laughs>
So Eat Wukong, him. now quadruply immortal and abruptly sober, realizes that that might not have been the smartest move on his part, and opts to flee back to Flower Fruit Mountain to escape the consequences of his actions. Meanwhile, the but he's immortal. Wine Times 100. In charge of the banquet, Lao Tzu, the officials from Wukong's apartment, and the immortal Wukong impersonated all independently present their grievances to the Jade Emperor, who quickly puts two and two together and dispatches pretty much the entire army of heaven That's to the of Wukong. Now, of course, because <laughs> Wukong is absurdly powerful, this is ineffective, and what was supposed to be a simple capture mission turns into a full-scale battle between the forces of heaven and Sun Wukong's army of demon monkeys. Now, while all that drama is happening, <laughs> who should arrive at the heavenly palace? So many mistakes. Kwan Yin and her disciple Moksha, who came for the Peach Festival and are understandably surprised to find the heavenly palace in complete disarray. So Kwan Yin asks what all the fuss is about, and upon being briefed, she sends Moksha down to get a sense of what's going on. So Moksha arrives at Flower Fruit Mountain, just in time for Wukong, who's been thoroughly kicking the collective asses of the army of heaven, to right. make a fight with somebody. So Moksha and Wukong battle for a while, but Moksha unfortunately can't quite keep up with the Monkey King and has to return to heaven in defeat. But Kwan Yin, now better briefed on the situation, suggests to God who could be sent to fight Wukong, Erlang, a powerful loose candidate Ooh. who don't play by the Jade Emperor's rules. Ooh. So they summon him and he goes to confront Wukong, who's like, oh, hey, if you don't mind, could you send out the Devarajas to fight? Two Titans. I'm getting bored over here. And Erlang is like, not as bored as you're gonna be. And they, oh. they both end up turning into Godzilla scale monsters, but Wukong inadvertently terrifies his own army into a rout with how scary he looks. And oh, he turns of his own fleeing army, disheartens the monkey thing, who shrinks down and runs away. But Erlang isn't gonna be evaded that easily, and he uses his magical third eye, uh, he uh, has one of those, to find Wukong, who's <laughs> turned into an innocent looking sparrow. <laughs> Erlang responds by turning into a sparrow hawk, in response to which Wukong transforms. Weird battle. Into <laughs> and this kind of goes on for a while. <laughs> Shapeshifter duels are fun. In the end, it's our buddy Lao Tzu who manages to capture the Monkey King by entrapping him in a diamond snare. Wukong, captured at last, is brought to the monster execution block, where uh -oh. apparently the Court of Heaven forgot the meaning of the word immortal, since nothing they throw at him hurts him in any way. Right. So the Jade Emperor is at a loss as to how to kill him, but Lock Lao Tzu him has down. a suggestion. If they stick him in his magic brazier of eight trigrams and leave him there for 49 days, they should be able to separate out the elixir of immortality from his body, and as you can do that? consequence, leave the troublesome Monkey King about as dead as you can get. So 49 days pass, and they finally open the brazier to extract the elixir, only to find that it's still firmly attached to Sun Wukong. <laughs> experience is that the smoke gave him awesome looking red eyes. So Wukong is 110% done with heaven, so he starts fighting his way through the entire heavenly army. Oh. The Jade Emperor, now completely what a beast. out of options, finally calls on his last resort, the Buddha himself. Oh. So Buddha and his two uh -oh. best disciples, Ananda and Kashyapa, go to deal with Wukong, who is at present fighting 36 thunder deities, because why not? So Buddha why asks not? Wukong what he wants, and Wukong's like, you know what? I'm kind of feeling like overthrowing the Jade Emperor today. Oh Wouldn't gosh. Be fun? And Buddha's like, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll make it bad with you, okay? If you can successfully jump out of the palm of my hands, I'll believe that you're qualified to rule heaven. It's a sports. trick, don't and do it. It's time for another exciting round of what will Sun Wukong do uh, next? Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. I need to know. Unsurprisingly, Sun Wukong takes that bet uh. and blasts off from Buddha's hand until he reaches the very edge of the universe itself, where he finds five pillars supporting the sky. Wukong decides to leave a memento of himself there, graffitiing one of the pillars, and then, for good measure, peeing on it. And peeing on it? So Wukong backflips all the way back to Buddha's palm, like, Shows what you know, old man! I made it out of the pillars of the universe! And the Buddha's like, Is that so? Well, I have a little plot twist. Uh-oh. See, one of the perks of enlightenment is that I'm one with everything, and as it turns out, that's not just hyperbole. Sure enough, written on one of Buddha's fingers is Wukong's graffiti, along with the faintest whiff of monkey pee. Turns out the whole universe is the palm of Buddha's <laughs> So Wukong freaks out and tries to skedaddle, but the Buddha uses more of his Buddha magic to trap him under a mountain, which is also his hand. It's complicated. Which Wukong yeah, will really be able to escape stupidly sounds... easily. But then they stick a magic seal on top of the mountain, and that's that. And it is here under this beautiful and stuck. single called Sun Wukong spends the next 500 years. What a story. Um, I feel like the Monkey King didn't start out wanting to be bad. Pete, you know, I I just don't feel that way. I feel like the gods, maybe the gods up there knew like he would turn out the way he was, but at first he wasn't being bad, and slowly over time things kept happening, and he became well bad. He pink. He he started turning into like Genghis Khan. He wanted to take over everything, but now he's trapped under a mountain, and I need to know what happens. I need to know what happens. I can't wait to react to the next episode, but. I've heard of the Monkey King before now, now that I've watched this. There's a Chinese singer called Watching You, and he has a song. He has a song about this. It's absolutely awesome. So you need to go check out Watching You. Um, he, he's all over YouTube. If you So go search him, check him out. Terrific dude. But just like this channel, this channel is so awesome. I learned so much. Could you imagine being immortal that many times over? But then, you know, he got tricked. He got tricked. 
he got tricked and now he's stuck underneath a mountain. <sighs> What'd you think? Not too much, I guess. <laughs> anyway, those are my thoughts. What's your thoughts? Comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. I'd love to know what you're thinking. But for now, hit that subscribe button, share the video, like the video, and spread that peace, that love, that happiness wherever you go. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Baby, donde tú quieras, yo paso a buscarte. Tú espérame afuera, pa' si no llamarte. No traigas pa'.